I asked Greg what I should wear this morning, so he told me a suit. So I'll follow you, right, buddy? I thought I told you a toga. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got a ham and egg act here. Um, uh, welcome today. This is probably the most unusual press conference I've ever been involved in, and uh, it's conflicting. You know, there's conflict for a lot of reasons, and we're taking our gymnastics program and putting them in the hands of two great co-head coaches with Megan Marsden and Tom Farden. We feel great about that. Uh, the leader of the pack is uh, stepping down, uh, so that makes it quite a conflict for all of us and me personally. Um, we all know the accomplishments of the gymnastics team. I was kidding because nobody knows them all because there's a lot of them. Uh, many things about Greg and the gymnastics program you can see and some you can't see. And many times when you have um, an opportunity and see somebody move on, you kind of lift up the hood and look under and sometimes it's not as good and sometimes it's better than you ever thought. And when we look up under the hood with Greg's regime and what's going to happen now, it's better than it's ever been. And uh, there's countless times that Greg has helped me and our program by uh, just thinking about things. And we sit and talk and uh, kind of philosophize on life. And that's an important thing for us. Uh, Greg has always helped orchestrate what we're doing today. He's always in charge told me what to say, not to say. Uh, I appreciate the student athletes being here. First and foremost, they're the center of all what we do, and everybody knows that. Uh, I've had the chance to, to get to know in a, a high level Megan Marsden and Tom Farden as what they'll be as co-head coaches. We've, we've met a few times and gone over some things, and it's interesting because um, you're never the same. You know, when you, when you grow as a team in athletics, if you're not moving in a different direction, not getting better, not trying new things, you're gonna fall behind. And Tom and, and, and Megan are excited about some of the things they wanna do. Uh, so things will be different, but one thing will always be the same, and that's caring for the student athletes and doing what's best for them. Never ever did I feel the gymnastics program wasn't trying to do that. Some of it was tough love, some of it was straight love, but they cared so much, it's incredible. Uh, I've had the opportunity uh, to work with a lot of different people and had the chance to, to know uh, how well people are gonna do, and I'm excited to have you involved in that. Uh, but one thing I do wanna just share, just a couple things with you, and I won't be long, uh, as you can tell, I wrote all these notes and I've got to memorize, so what the heck. Um, but uh, Greg and I have known each other a long time, and uh, he's done a lot more than people know. Uh, he's given me advice and helped the whole department, and people maybe don't understand that. And uh, we would have long philosophical dis discussions. He would give me some advice, sometimes very gingerly, Sometimes where he'd storm out of the room or I'd yell at him, but at the end of the day it made us better And I think that's the bottom line at the end of the day There were so many things that were in the best interest of our student-athletes that I would have never thought of if it weren't for Greg uh, It's personal for me um, He every day he bought it brought it in gave us his a game and from my standpoint uh, you can have a lot of dark moments in athletics and a lot of things that are tough. And um, from my standpoint, that's when you find out who your friends are. And the best compliment I can give Greg from who I am and what I care about him, he is a stand-up guy. He is a stand-up guy that is there through good and bad and is not afraid to take an unpopular decision if it's right. And I just appreciate him for all he's done and for being a stand-up guy for me especially. Thanks. Okay, I'm very uncomfortable with this. Um, I'm in fact, Liz and Chris are making me do it. Uh, uh, and part, part of that is because uh, I know I'm not gonna get through this without being that blubbering old man uh, up on the mic. Uh, and you know, 
if you've ever been to a banquet where they hand the mic to an old man, <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. And I really don't want to be that old man, but uh, uh, there, there are some people uh, that I need to uh, thank. And uh, it, it would get much too long if I thanked everybody by name. Uh, but this has never been a one-man show, a one-man operation. Uh, and for many years, uh, I get a lot of credit uh, for a lot of pe uh, work that other people do. And I hope through those years I have gotten to those people and tell, told them, made sure they understand how much I appreciate everything they do for us. Um, I also think this should be much more about the here and now than the past. And here and now are these beautiful ladies right there. Beautiful young women, I should say. Uh, and what an amazing accomplishment this year. Their second Pac-12 championship, second in the nation, an Uneva Bars champion. Uh, please give them a big round of uh, applause. You know, for me, it's always been about them. I wanted to be a teacher, and I got into coaching uh, by chance, and I fell in love with it because uh, it was an opportunity to be the ultimate teacher. Everything else that's come along the way has been so that I could continue to do that. You've got to win. You've got to put people in the stands. You've got to keep your job. Uh, but it really is all about those three or four hours that I can walk in that gym and spend uh, with amazing people, amazing people. And they don't do it with the hopes that there's going to be some paycheck at the end of the thing. They do it because it's what they love. It's, they do it because that's who they are. Which brings me to this. I have three here. Nancy, stand up. <laughs> Colo, stand up. Corey, stand up. Tori, stand up. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Who are graduating, and they're looking for a job. <laughs> and if anybody's hearing this, and you're in a position with your compa company to hire somebody, <laughs> you will not find more disciplined, hardworking, honest, goal-oriented people, and you could not find anybody that will better represent your organization. So if you've got a job, give me a call. <laughs> um, I, wanna, I wanna thank my assistants through all the years. Uh, I've been fortunate, there haven't been all that many when you think about how many years I've been here, uh, but they've all been unbelievable. And most of them have gone on themselves to do incredible things. Uh, the latest being uh, Jeff Graba, who uh, was just at the championships and took his team, Auburn, uh, to the Super Six for the first time in 22 years. Uh, uh, it's all about, when, when you're a leader of something like this, it's all about the people you surround yourself by, with. And, uh, and I have had some, some great ones. Uh, the staff, and the staff is everybody from our trainers, uh, our academic advisors, uh, um, nutrition, sports, sports psychology. psychology. <laughs> uh, all these, all these people have have been incredible. Uh, administrators, of course, Chris. But beyond that, I mean, the presidents, uh, the athletic directors. Uh, I have always had unbelievable support. Uh, from everybody at the University of Utah. Uh, donors, um, without donors like the Dumpke family, 
uh, who helped us build our facility and many others who, who donate our scholarships and do much, much more. Uh, we just could not have remained as competitive as we've been throughout all these years. Um, this is kind of funny to say, but the media, who, who <laughs> I started with, uh, not a very good uh, relationship in the early times, because I didn't feel like they gave us nearly enough. Uh, but over the years, uh, they have, and uh, uh, we've really appreciated that. And last but not least, our unbelievable fans, the greatest gymnastics fans on earth. Um, we're known as much uh, for them as we are for our accomplishments. And I could not be more grateful for how the university and the community of Salt Lake has embraced this team. Now, there are uh, just a few individuals uh, that, that personally I need to thank. Uh, first, uh, my two boys are in the room. <laughs> I want to th thank them for understanding all those games I missed of theirs because I was somewhere else watching. Somebody else's kids. <laughs> and of course, Megan. I mean, this has been a, a partnership, you know, for 35 years. I, I uh, she, she has never gotten the credit she's deserved. Uh, hopefully now she will. But uh, I could not have done this without her. This, this has been a partnership all the way through. Um, Anne-Marie Jensen. Anne-Marie, raise your hand. <laughs> Anne-Marie was one of my very first assistant coaches, and in fact, Coach Me Megan, and when she decided to start a family. She decided to leave coaching, but agreed to stay here and run our gymnastics meets. And she has done that ever since and runs the best gymnastics meet in the country. And everybody should be coming to her to ask her how it's done because nobody does it better. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Thanks for 40 great years. <laughs> She, by the way, we met because she was in uh, the gymnastics activity class I was teaching as a graduate assistant here in 1974. Mm -hmm. um, Liz Abel, who has been uh, a co-worker and a great friend, and believe me, has kept me out of trouble so many times. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Keith Hinchin, who's not here, you know, I came to the university to uh, work on a graduate degree in sports psychology. Uh, I wanted to be a sports psychologist, and uh, Dr. Hinchin uh, was my graduate advisor, uh, my teacher, uh, and became my good friend, and was our sports psychologist for 35 years. Uh, he helped me through so many ups and downs, and uh, both, both with my team, but also personally. And uh, uh, I just can't thank him enough for all those many years. And last but not least, uh, I want to talk about this guy a little bit. Um, you know, we were, we were graduate students together. That's, that's when we met, way back when. And we used to sit around, uh, you know, talking about how stupid the decisions were that the people running the athletic department were <laughs> making at the time. Yes, we and how we could do it so much better if we just had the chance. Uh, well, we, we both got a chance. <laughs> and, and while I am so proud of everything we've accomplished with the gymnastics team here, uh, 
believe me, none of it would have been possible. Much of it would not have been possible without the support you know, of this guy. And to me, whatever we have done is nothing. I, and I am in awe of what he has accomplished for the city of Salt Lake, the University of Utah, and the Th athletics department. It has been absolutely unbelievable. Um, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> I, I do want to say one more thing. Uh, I love this university. I love this city. I love this state. Um, I am a very lucky man that I got to do a job for 40 years that was my passion, that I couldn't wait to get out of bed uh, to get to. Um, uh, that's all any man can ask for. It's been great. Um, okay, so uh, with with some mixed emotions um, is how really my last month has gone. Um, I had a, a, an evening of it not too long ago with uh, my team winning a Pac-12 championship, but us losing one of our um, team members. And the, the emotions on that night were ridiculous. And, and now I'm going through it again just a few short weeks later um, after a weekend of incredible highs once again by these beautiful athletes um, as they um, uh, did everything they could everything that we had asked um, and competed lights out um, on the national stage um, and, and, and we had um, so much fun doing it and so that was the high of highs and then we all come home and um, Greg, the coaching staff has to break the news to the team that, that he's gonna retire and so that takes you down into sadness and for me very melancholy because um, uh, it's been the only thing I know to work with my husband, and um, some people ask, how, how do you do it? <laughs> and I guess I'm going to find out what it's like to not work with your husband. Um, and I'm not sure that I'm going to love that. Um, but what I do know, and, and another emotion I'm feeling, is, is one of excitement um, as we move forward with the future of Utah Gymnastics. And uh, um, this man here on my left, um, Tom Farden, when he came five years ago, Greg and I knew um, very quickly, it didn't take long at all, that we could tell that this was the one. This was the one that was going to help us move Utah Gymnastics into the future and transition um, one of us and, and two of us eventually um, out of the program with someone we felt um, that we would be okay with leaving our athletes in the hands of. And so, um, I think about what's coming up next. I watched our freshmen over the weekend <laughs> who were a big part of our success and they're around for another three years. I know the four freshmen coming in this summer to join us. Um, the returning team uh, along with Greg and I and the rest of our staff, Tom and I, I'm gonna <laughs> have to get <laughs> Is he unretiring? <laughs> Along with Tom and I, I've said that for a long time, so Tom and I, I feel really confident that um, we are going to be able to carry on the um, high standards that this man has set. Um, uh, I think what will make it best for Greg as he moves on into retirement is to watch this program continue to soar. And I feel um, strongly that we will move forward loud and proud as Utah Gymnastics has always been. Um, well, this is a very humbling day for me. I, I, I'm not quite sure if I have the words that are going to express my emotions. Um, I guess I should probably take you back to the genesis a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> Imagine this, I was getting off the plane on a recruiting trip and there was a voicemail from Greg Marsden. I'm like, oh, what does Greg Marsden want? And uh, 
left me a voicemail and said, hey, uh, Jeff just took the job at Auburn and, and um, you're at the top of my list. Like, I'd like you to give me a call back and, and let me know if you'd be interested in working with me. And, and I thought, I mean, I got done with the voicemail and had to listen to it two or three more times. I'm like, wait a minute, did he just say he wants me to come work with him? <laughs> I said, wait a minute, okay, all right. Legendary program, unbelievable support, unbelievable results in a beautiful state. Sign me up, let's go. So I <laughs> called my wife and I said, hey, you wanna move to Utah? <laughs> and she said, sure. So before I told the guy, yes, yeah, she had the first ba box packed and we were ready to go. And uh, the last, and, and, and then when I came here and I met them in person and I, I really didn't get to know Megan that well until the airport and she was there and, and picking us up. And, and uh, we were sitting in the little room and I, and I, I told Greg, I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm coming here to help you win another one. And, and he laughed and he said, oh, well, that's really nice. And you know what, boss? For 43 seconds, we were the <laughs> national champions. <laughs> Until that last bar routine. Okay, I just want you to know I did help you. <laughs> and then she stuck that disc on and went 995 and went, uh. <laughs> so, um, No, it, it, it is, it is uh, a few years ago he, he started teasing with me. And uh, for those who are his former athletes or currently working with him, you know uh, his intentions awfully, often, oftentimes start with a joke and he'll just tease with you and you'll say, hey, yeah, maybe someday you'll take over the program. I'm like, okay, all right, whatever. And then he kept saying that and then it came to fruition. And so for the past couple of years, um, I've been preparing myself to help in a leadership role with Megan and to lead this team to great heights. And with Dr. Hill, uh, I wanna thank you for putting your trust in that and I want you to let, I wanna let you know uh, you didn't hire the best looking coach. Um, you, didn't, you didn't hire the smartest one but you'll be hard pressed to find one that'll work harder. I know that. Thank you. <laughs> Questions from the media? Greg, knowing that this was your last year, did you approach it any differently? Um, no, not really. Other, other than maybe. Uh, uh, trying to allow Megan and Tom to to be out front a little more, um, but other than that, in the gym, I, I don't think I don't think anyone would have noticed any difference this year than any other year. Greg, was there a specific reason why now? Was it the round number of forty, or did you just feel like this was the right time, or what, what went into this being the year? Yeah, you know, uh, there really are a lot of reasons, uh, and there's not one overwhelming thing that I can point to and say this is why. Uh, and and for uh, you know, I, I think everybody that works at a job a long time uh, thinks about you know, am I going to know when it's time to be done? You know, or am I going to outlive my welcome? Uh, and I always worried a little bit about that. And all I can say is, uh, it was just kind of a culmination of things that uh, I just felt like it was time. And you know, I talked with uh, uh, Tom and Megan and Dr. Hill about that a year ago. And uh, uh, and and you know, Dr. Hill was great. He said, you know, if you change your mind, and and they were great. You know, if you change your mind along the way, we'd love that. Uh, but I just didn't, and I, I was comfortable with that decision then, and I'm comfortable with it today. It's just, I feel like it's just that time. Greg, how, how did you keep this a seeker for your number one <laughs> in this day and age? And number two, did you think about making the decision before the year? So, you know, because I know a lot of people would have liked to have, you know, a lot of other programs even would like to have uh, given mm -hmm. tributes to you along the way. Yeah, and that's exactly why I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. Um, I, I didn't want it to be, uh, you know, the Greg Marsden fel, farewell well tur, farewell tour. Um, you know, for me, it's always been, and I hope I've done a reasonably good job about keeping them out in front uh, in the media and and things, and as much as I could. Uh, you know, stay in the background. Uh, I mean, obviously, I have some responsibilities to the media and that kind of thing. But to me, it's always been about them, and I didn't want to do anything uh, 
you know, that would take away from their season and their accomplishments this year, and especially for our seniors, you know, their last that last year. Uh, I knew there would be time to deal with all of this, and it, it didn't need to go on forever. Speaking about them, um, how did you break the news to your team? Um, well, I tried to do it in a, uh, a positive way. I know uh, that they all love uh, Megan and Tom, and so I just basically announced, I, I told them I have some good news for them, uh, that starting uh, uh, in a few days that Megan and Tom were going to take over as the co-head coaches of the University of Utah. Craig, what was Sunday like for you, sitting in the stands, kind of hanging out with the fans? I mean, was that when it really maybe hit you that, that this was it? Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's hit me yet, to be perfectly honest. Uh, you know, that was uh, really that was nothing more than uh, the NC2A limits how many credentials you can have on the floor. And so we, we, with the events we were on and the people that had been involved throughout the season, we put the people on the floor that we thought were most appropriate to support our athletes. And really that's all that that was about. And, uh, um, you know, people keep asking me, uh, you know, am I ready for this? And, and, you know, the answer is, I don't know. And, and, uh, is it scary as hell? Absolutely. Do I know what I'm going to do? No. Uh, I don't fish. I don't golf. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't have any hobbies. Uh, <laughs> you know, th this is my hobby. Uh, um, you know, but but at some point you've got to deal with that. I was I was uh, well. I I have said this a couple times this week. Uh, and if if my seniors. Uh, can deal with it. You know, it's a scary time for them because uh, they're done with school and they're not on scholarship anymore, and they're and they've got to go out into the real world and find their own way. And uh, I told them if they can do it, I can do it. So here we go, the next great adventure. Talk to me a little bit about this past weekend. I mean, obviously. It would have been better to win the national championship, but you got the second best thing. How was it to leave on that note? You know, it was great, and it, it wouldn't have, you know, this decision was made a year ago, and it wouldn't have mattered how the season ended. And, uh, you know, I've experienced everything along the way. Uh, um, um, but with that said, um, I, I really couldn't have asked for a more storybook ending. I mean, it, it really, uh, to be there uh, till the very end uh, with a team that was went in seated 12th, I don't think anybody expected us really to challenge for the championship and to push it to the very end and, and uh, mm -hmm. almost get there. It was, it was great. It was one of those great memories. Talking about your lack of hobbies, um, how often are we going to see you in the gym with Megan and Tom? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's really critically important that you don't see me at all in the gym. Uh, this is, this is, uh, it would be easy for my shadow to get in the way of what they need to do. And, and uh, I, I'm sure, uh, well, I know they're excited about um, moving forward. And I know much of, of the way we do things will continue, but I know they're also excited about uh, some ideas that they have to ways that they can make things even better. And uh, what I don't want them to ever feel is that I'm, you know, second guessing them or too involved or giving them recommendations. This is this is their program now, and uh, they've got to find their own way, and I need to stay out of the way. Megan, do you believe him? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I do believe that, that physically he won't be around, but I'm, ho I'm hoping that I will be able to bounce ideas off of him from time to time. I hope that doesn't go away because, uh, I mean, we are married. We are going to spend time together, and it is important that I can continue to share my career on some level. So hopefully at home we once in a while can talk about gymnastics. Here's our conversation. You never spend any time with me, Megan. <laughs> You're always at work. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,
Greg, I know you've gotten a lot of help and you've talked about that, but uh, you've really transformed gymnastics in this state. So in your words, how did you do that? Oh man, I don't I don't know the answer to that. You know, it was just it was a process. You know, it was just one thing at a time, and and uh, um, you know something would come up that's a challenge, and and I love challenges, and I I try to figure out the way that we can meet that challenge, you know, and get better. Uh, whether it was you know putting people in the stands or or getting you guys interested in us or or uh, recruiting, you know. Um, uh, selling the university in, in Utah, or, you know, whatever it was, uh, it was just, you know, one step at a time and and look at each thing and try to get a little better at each thing year after year after year. Tom, could you just talk about your emotions when Greg first off told you that you were gonna become co-head coach or when he announced that and then just now currently? <clears throat> Um, when he first brought it up to me, um, like everything, and you know, when you look at a program of this magnitude, you're scared. And so I went home and changed my underwear and came back to the office and put my big boy pants on and he said, you know what, it's a progression. Uh, I'm glad that I had this year to prepare for this. Um, Greg, some of Greg's best mentoring moments, um, and I called it a mentoring moment. I actually journal every single workout that we do at Utah, and I have. I've journaled, I've handwritten and journaled every workout I've ever done. And I'm a little weird, I'm sorry about that. But uh, his, his best mentoring moments to me were always on the phone. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I've grabbed on to and hung on to the words um, that meant the most to me and that were most impactful, and, and he helped mold me. I, I came as an enthusiastic coach, um, but I wasn't as refined as I needed to be, and, and Greg has continued to help me um, become a better coach and a leader. So <clears throat> now with this day and moving forward, um, I've had a year to slowly adjust to the thought process of becoming uh, a leader in this program and, and and I appreciate that it's helped me immensely and so it, 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 there'll still be an adjustment t time I mean it's just like getting a new haircut it doesn't want to well I haven't had a new haircut in years but <laughs> it has to lay flat or whatever you wanted to do for a while but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the challenges and and obviously uh, with our finish this year didn't leave myself much room for a big jump since there's only one more spot to go <laughs> who's that genius but uh, but uh, it's it, the emotions right now are 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 um, actually uh, day to day. Just take it take it day to day, and and don't make it bigger than what it is. Just just continue to work hard and have a good vision, and and treat the athletes with with care and compassion. All right, I know you two have already figured out the in the gym stuff, but I'm curious which one of you is going to spend hours and hours on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I, t Tom, because he, I mean, one of the qualities he has that's similar to Greg is he's a little more big picture, and he's been thinking about every aspect and how we're going to take over every aspect, including that part, and he's fully admitted that, now it's not going to be Greg Marsden style, but we have to have a present on social media, a presence, and so I know Tom's thought about it a little bit. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is an area that Greg might help a little bit with because it's very much behind the scenes, and he loves loves that. Um, and, and I've also heard that, that there's some coaches that have people that do this that act like they're the person. And I about, when Liz told me that, I thought, okay, that won't happen. I'm, Greg is not going to pretend to be me. You all know, will know. It's not me. So No high heels, Greg? <laughs> so I'm, I'm not exactly sure how, how that will all go, but probably not nearly on the level um, that Greg's done it, because there's nobody better than Greg with social media. Any more questions for me? You got the athletes here if anybody 